Greatest mysteries of life. Where did I put my striker? Did I hang you up? No. Why would you do something smart like that, dumbass? Haha, <laughs> right there. Why the hell would you put it there? Hmm. Alright, welcome back to uh, Gomer Goes to Camp, whatever you want to call it. So, we're gonna try to do a little welding on this thing tonight. My main concern tonight, I want to work on these corners, these edges a little bit. Now, I'm gonna build them up, try to build them up nice and square. This guy right here, there's so much material missing on that. That's gonna take a lot of rod. I've got everything kind of cleaned up as well as I can. I threw a wire wheel on the grinder and it really got in there much better. But before we can do that, we have to heat we have to heat this thing up to anywhere from there. We're going to try to get it up to about 300. I have a temperature probe that will go up to 300. Now I don't have any of the wax, the heat sticks, which would be handy. But we could be a little more scientific about it with the uh, with the probe. So in the black box, we have Hobart 7018 AC. It is my favorite welding rod for most of my needs. It does well. We're going to do the edges in these uh, corners of the 7018 around the outside. I don't want a hardened rod on that outside and chipping it off, flying off, hitting me in the leg or whatever, somebody's standing by. For the face of the anvil, we have 8th inch, um, uh, get the name right, we have 8th inch hard alloy 58 by McKay, which is by Hobart. But first things first, we got to get this thing up to temperature, and that's going to take a little bit of time. There's going to be a little bit of watching. So I'm not going to bother running the camera the whole time. We'll uh, throw you guys in the time lapse, all that good stuff. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, yes, geez, almost forgot. This one I better do a safety disclaimer before somebody tells me I'm going to die or you're going to die or everybody's going to die and we're all going to get cancer and everybody's going to live happily ever after. But I make light of it and you guys know I'm not the safest guy on the planet. Obviously I'm not the safest guy on the planet. I mean I have three kids and you know the rest. But anyway, this hard facing rod here has a lot of manganese in it. If you get overexposed to manganese fumes while you're welding, it can attack your central nervous system and give you symptoms like Parkinson's disease, a lot of nervous damage system. It can affect the way you behave. There's a lot of bad things from overexposing yourself to this stuff. A lot of people think if you go outside, you'll be just fine. Now, even if you're outside with this stuff, get a good fan behind you blowing that smoke away from your face. That is that. Not that I'm a big safety guy, but that's the kind of thing that I don't screw around with. So we have our exhaust fan and I have a fan to go behind me. When you're welding with this stuff, and really it's, it's good practice with anything you're welding with because any kind of, most welding is not healthy for you. It doesn't matter how safe they say it is. You have to kind of do everything you can do to keep those fumes from coming up under your hood. A lot of us, myself included, I tend to lean in a little close to my work to see it to see it better sometimes, but I've got to get out of that habit and learn to back off a little bit and we're going to be backing off quite a bit to do this stuff because like I said, I don't need any problems that this kind of thing right here can give me. So safety disclaimer is over. We will continue on to the content of this video. We'll see you on the other side. Let's do this thing. Kind of resigned myself to that. This is 
going to take a long time. So this, we kind of domed this out quite a bit right here because we were missing a huge chunk. I mean, that chunk was monstrous. The only thing I did not like, and it's hard to get, when you're just gobbing it on there, it's hard to make it look pretty. But what I do like coming along the edge here, I don't see a seam where my welds meet the uh, tool steel, which is good. So this is all 7018 AC. Softer on the edges. I'd rather have softer and then we have the uh, We have the other rods to do the, the face of the anvil So I'm gonna let this thing kind of cool down overnight and all day tomorrow Obviously because I'll be at work and then I'll heat it up again and start hitting this top 
I'm going to see, I see where I have to build up a little bit right there. Because the big thing I want to get rid of is from here to here we have a, a decent dish right there. That's really the only spot I plan on using that uh, hard surfacing rod. Of course I may have to down here on this end also. It's kind of it's kind of sloped down there too and it looks like I'll have to build that edge up just a little bit more. This edge here is built up plenty high enough and see a few spots. I had a hell of a time getting this rod to, to strike an arc tonight. If you can't tell, if I decide to put the time lapse on, we'll see how bright it is on that GoPro. But um, I had a really hard time striking an arc. Normally I don't have that rough of a time doing it. So, and you can see some spots where I have a little bit too porous, but I think it's up high enough to where it's going to end up getting ground off. But I wanted to build this up here so it was higher than in here. So when we go to do the final grinding on this, we have something that we can uh, we can bring it all down at once. I honestly don't want to heat this anvil up too many times to do this, but it's probably going to take two or three heats on the anvil itself to do it. So that's where we're at. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to keep on this path until it is finished. And I'll catch you on the next one.